The outcome of this instructional video is to offer the user, training, and a reference to the setup, control, and use of Kalis instruments to support the method of procedures for one port PIM finder solution, the effective mitigation and resolution of external PIM sources. This method can be followed to resolve external PIM faults in any band, but for the purpose of this training, we will focus on band 14 and band 17 testing, the 700 MHz band. Settings used in this video are for training purposes only. Any site-specific settings, as requested in the MOP, should be adhered to when PIM finding on site. Each step of this flowchart that has video content has a timestamp below the step. Please feel free to navigate to the portion of interest. To achieve good PIM hygiene of the antenna system environment, sweep up loose metal swarf, replace metal cable ties with low PIM alternatives, or ensure they are tight and excess lengths are cut off. Tighten any loose nuts or bolts in the antenna beam and surrounds, and inspect all metal to metal contacts to ensure there are no intermittent connections. Connect the range default module RTF to the IPA test port. Connect the USB cable from USB 1 on the IPA to the RTF USB mini port. Connect the RF cable from the monitor port output of the IPA. Insert the battery into the IPA and press the on button. Ensure the Wi-Fi on the IPA is turned on and connect the computer to the IPA. The IPA RTF, and IVA instruments that will be used in this process can all be controlled through Unify software. Once mastered, Unify Control makes it convenient and efficient to run all procedural steps from a single software platform. For band 17, select the 700L band, and for band 14, select the 700H band in Unify. These bands chosen are examples only. For example, if one were to test the public safety bands, select 700L plus PS or 700H plus PS bands. Prior to running distance to PIM sweeps DTP, it is necessary to calibrate the DTP function on the system. Select range default mode in Unify. Change the distance setting to the requirements of your site. For example, 50 meters and change the velocity factor to 0.99. This is the velocity factor of free space outside the antenna system. Connect the CIS and select Calibrate DTP and perform the calibration. Connect the test port of the RTF module to the antenna port to be tested. Prior to testing for PIM in the radio system, it is necessary to ensure external interferences are removed or at least identified and recorded to ensure these signals are not causing false suspected PIM sources. Also to ensure any fixed tone measurements use frequencies that are not shared with external interference signals. Select Spectrum Monitor Mode in Unify and run a test across the band of interest. Select Swept Tones Mode in Unify and run a test across the band. Record the results. Once calibration has been performed, run a distance default, return loss sweep. The return loss peak, prior to the largest trailing edge, coincides with the antenna face. In this plot, one can observe a distance to PIM sweep of a PIM source on the antenna face, coinciding with the distance default, return loss peak. Record the distance of the return loss peak and subtract this distance from subsequent distance to PIM sweeps to indicate distance from the antenna face to the arc distance of the external PIM source. Test the other band of interest and depending on the swept PIM result, choose the band to continue on based on the highest PIM level. Switch on the IVA and connect to the IVA in Unify. Select PIM Finder mode and ensure the frequencies selected do not coincide with any external interferers. Ideally, 
4 band 14 and 17, select 728 MHz for tone 1 and 757 MHz for tone 2. This offers a third order PIM product in both bands. Some bands may have a band pass amplifier, BPA module. If using a BPA, ensure the gain is adjusted in the PIM finding settings. If only a filter is used, ensure the gain is set to zero or, if the insertion loss is significant and known, set as an attenuation. Set the offset for the IVA measurement using the gain of the BPA as recorded on the rear of the unit. Ensure to set the offset type to gain. Set the limit line for PIM in accordance with the procedure based on the swept PIM measurement. Select PIM Finder mode and start sweeping in the arc area corresponding with the DTP distance. Mark PIM sources that are discovered and repair or cover them with an RF barrier. Select Swept Tones mode in Unify and run a test across the band. Check the results of this sweep have improved against the original swept measurement. If the swept measurement is still above the desired specification of the site, repeat the process of PIM finding after a DTP measurement and change in limit line. If the swept measurement passes, record the results and continue to the next tilt setting or port. Reports can be easily generated through Unify software, allowing for a single point of software contact for the entire process. Data can be exported and collated as required. This concludes the instructional video. Please refer to the one port PIM finder method of procedure for further information. Thank you for your attention. Please contact your Kalis representative for any further product information. Kalis, on top of next-gen antenna solutions.